Um, so I want to start the discussion of uh, with probably Hari um, on why abroad, why I think of um, you know accelerators, incubators in the first place, and then uh, once you've kind of made that decision, you want to go down that path. Uh, how do you go about uh, you know applying and, and also you know making a decision to go abroad for uh, acceleration? Uh, okay, one of the obvious answer is the global exposure. So we knew that our product is, is not restricted to the Indian market and we, we want to get a global exposure. And uh, you know, we were looking for the other accelerators and YC was uh, the first choice we were looking at. And a couple of other non-obvious reasons is kind of trying to, you know, understanding how bad you are at a couple of things. One, one obvious example is design. So we thought our design was good or reasonable, but once we went into YC and we, you know, kind of star saw other startups, the quality of design and the quality of, uh, you know, they are put in, in the product as such is way above our numbers. We really didn't know that we sucked that much. So knowing that where you are really good at and where, where you, you know, are in that great at, that's, that's one thing which we didn't knew that we learned from them. And of course, the mentor, mentoring and um, kind of connections there is amazing. And that, that's something we knew we would get into. But uh, once we get, got in there, um, the kind of connections we got, the value we got from them is immense. And that helped a lot. That, that's, that's the main you know, reason why we thought we are going to go into there. Great. Um, Abhinav, you've been part of uh, two accelerator programs. Um, any experience coming from? The eastern side, how did you go about making a decision on where to go? For that side, uh, it, it was a tough decision. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing you have to focus on, and which I always agree, is uh, the team should be together. Uh, you just don't want one person's brain to be working continuously, and you have no one to discuss with. So make sure that your team is together. The second thing is what the country and their network can offer you. Uh, and that's very important. Uh, if your product is concentrated on a certain sector, as Hari said, that if you're thinking that your product is just not concentrated to a certain level of population, but you, it's exposed to everyone, global exposure is there. So you have to choose in that area. Uh, Chile was an incubator where you were just trying to develop your idea. Mm -hmm. uh, JFDI was more focused, where I have, I know what I'm doing. I have a concrete team that this is a team which can make it possible. And that's where I think JFDI invests 80% on the team and 20% of the product, which I feel. Uh, so I would say that Startup Chile was incubator and JFDI was an accelerator. And, and that's, a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, there have been some question around what's incubation versus acceleration. I think Bamshi had a great point on this, on uh, you know, what you what one should expect uh, in, from an incubator program versus uh, an accelerator program, and you've been part of both Startup Chile and 500. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, most incubator programs are very, very suitable for startups that are early uh, in the development stage. So startups that have a concept, a very good concept, or even a prototype, are pretty uh, well fit for an incubation program, where there's a little, little bit more structure and you have time to build out your product and get some initial traction, product market fit. Um, accelerators would work best for you if you already have a decent product and some amount of market traction. So acceleration is supposed to be acceleration. It gets you faster to product market fit. It gets you faster to the kind of funding that you want to raise. Um, so you need to be slightly more advanced in your life cycle as a startup uh, for accelerators uh, as opposed to incubators. And I would say that um, even choosing different kind of accelerators that are now available now, there are corporate accelerators, there are sector-wise accelerators that have come up, um, you know, whether focusing on cloud versus, um, you know, uh, digital media. I think that would also kind of factor in um, while, ma while making a decision. Yeah, it definitely does. If, if you have a product ready, then going to one of those industry-specific or vertical-specific accelerators helps mm -hmm. because you get the right connections, uh, whether it be investments, um, so need not necessarily be from angel investors or VCs, but a lot of companies, corporates, uh, do institutional funding now. So accelerators are more suited for that kind of a purpose if you're already slightly ahead 
in the life cycle. Great, great. Um, Ankur, um, you've built a company that uh, where India is a market, but still chose to go to the US um, to be part of 500 startups. Uh, how did you evolve into that decision, or how did you come about that? And what would you recommend to startups, and what stage should they be really looking for something like this? We already had a product live for a few months. I think I'm loud enough to lock the mic. So <laughs> we already just, had. Just a, try it again. Yeah, okay. We already had a product live for a few months when we uh, went into private startups. Sure, and sure. <laughs> We had a debate uh, internally as well as with 500 as to should we raise money in India, uh, as in 500 investing us in India and we don't go to the valley, and uh, or uh, should we just go there and do something over there? And uh, till then, I, I, I would be honest that I still don't know if it has worked out well for us. Well, maybe in the next few months, if you ask me the same question, I would have a concrete answer. But a few things we already knew when we applied that uh, probably uh, for our India business that we are, we won't get India specific insights from mentors over there. So uh, we needed the money for sure. So I said, okay, let's take the money. Uh, we needed the product advice that we would get over there, and we spoke to almost all the uh, established players in our industry over there and learned from them how it evolved from them over there. So that's something we wanted. Uh, what we are sure we'll get is a product uh, or design advice, and we were able to uh, double our interaction numbers with our users uh, within the duration of the accelerator. Uh, what the challenge was that we are an operations-driven company, we have uh, 10 people now, and so there were like seven people in India and two people in the US. So remotely managing them in India was a challenge. I underestimated that bit of uh, being uh, abroad. So that was a challenge, and uh, I think I underestimated that a bit. But uh, but was it a good decision to go or not go? I think uh, overall uh, we have taken back a lot from there. Uh, probably we should have tried to just be there uh, learn from the ecosystem over there, get mentors, advisors on board, and then come back and try and scale the uh, you know, the users and the product. Uh, what we try to do is both of them together. We'll be there and we'll remotely manage our team over here and try and scale things. So that was a bit of a friction, but I think we should have just slowed down things a bit, gone there, taken whatever we can get, and come back and done things. But we are still doing that, just that we, we try to do too much when, when we are there, so we burnt out a bit. That's good. Um, I want to take a step back and come back to you, Abhinav, on um, what has your experience been like in the terms of the process and criteria uh, in different programs. If you can elaborate on that a little bit and what should startups expect and how should they start planning uh, to apply. Uh, I went for batch two of uh, both Startup Chile and JFDI. The Startup Chile is a very early stage incubator uh, where you just have a concept and the application process the online application process is also checking the basic concept and business model for the product. You don't have to give extensive market research and everything. Uh, well, JFDI is a the application had like 35 questions, asking different things: what teams have done together, what founders have done together, what their interests are, and they're looking for more insight numbers. Uh, what Mengs uh, co-founder of JFDI says, beyond PhD research. Like, mm -hmm. if you know what focus you're trying to do. After the application process, they uh, do some interviews over Skype or, if possible, face-to-face, -face, and then they select the people. Uh, at least during my time, Startup Chile didn't have any interview sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as uh, Vamshi said, uh, accelerator like JFDI, is beyond incubator, where you are sure you might have a prototype, might be generating some revenue a bit, uh, you have shown some traction. Those things are important, and that's important for JFDI as well. Sure. Um, Hari, I'd like you to kind of add, uh, you know, your experience of applying to Y Combinator and how that process worked out. Kind of get your thoughts on that. Uh, the process is uh, probably straightforward, and they have it in the website as well. First, you uh, fill in a form. Uh, which, which has all the details about your company, talks about your co-founders, uh, how long the co-founders have been together, what is the hack you did apart from computer, and a, a whole bunch of stuff. And then uh, Hajj from the YC team, he called us up and then we had a one-hour uh, phone interview. And they liked the product, they liked uh, what we were doing, so they called us over there for an interview. 
and the interview was pretty stressful because you know you have like four or five people there asking you questions uh, so you might prepare a lot but when one question ends immediately the next question is going to come up so you can't lie so you have to tell the truth no matter what happens uh, that means all the preparation stuff like you know if they ask this question i'm going to say this if they ask second question i'm going to say, say this everything gets shattered when the questions come at that that rapid pace from like five people one after the so that was pretty stressful and that's about it like after that they give you a call and say whether you are cleared or not in your experience was there like a one key thing that uh, tilted uh, the decision in your favor or was it like a combination of factors it's a couple of things one is uh, we had two other yc companies using our product and we made them tell uh, give a good review about us saying hey you now you are using our product now is a good time to give give us a testimonial and just pass it on to pg and i think that worked in our favor I, mm -hmm. i'm not sure how much percentage that added to but you know mm -hmm. any, anything helps so sure. I, i think in terms of referrals if you've talked to the founders of the who been part of the program i think that that definitely uh, uh, is a big plus uh, and i can yeah. attest to it as you know being part of gsf2 that that really makes a lot of difference um now i like to now move ahead into okay now the decisions made you you're now part of it how do you make most of your stint um and i think i'll open up to vamshi to kind of uh, talk about that um, how do you go about taking the best out of the experience yeah i think my uh, top 3 pieces of advice uh, would be meet a ton of people uh, not just investors uh, you're obviously out there in an accelerator program to raise money uh, but you should also use that opportunity to create very strong networks with other founders founders like you who are struggling uh, in early stage but also founders who've been there done that so farther along they see these as these b uh, these guys give you the strongest recommendations and referrals to investors so it's a good good practice to meet other founders uh, you should also spend a lot of time meeting um, mentors and advisors uh, word of caution there'll be you know pretty much everyone claims to be a mentor at least in silicon valley so uh, be a bit picky about who you want to talk to but definitely meet a lot of them uh, and that's that's my number one advice uh, if you're there for 90 days for 3 months you should at least meet 150 people that's like a very low benchmark <laughs> but try to hit that <laughs> uh, the second piece of advice is uh, be ready right uh, have your pitch decks ready have your one pages ready have your two pages ready have your exec summary ready have your blurbs ready don't run around um you know when you need to send these out to investors because you need to respond very quickly if possible instantly that that gives a, a very good impression about how prepared you are as a as a startup i've seen a lot of startups not do this uh, you should you should have your one minute pitch you should have your elevator pitch ready you should just basically be ready to pitch at the drop of a hat it's very important uh the third piece of advice is uh, if you are going to the us get a car <laughs> don't be <laughs> Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Get a car. It helps. Um, it helps you hit that 150 meetings target uh, very easily. So that's that's basically my top three pieces of advice. And maybe Uncle, do you want to add pros and cons? Uh, what worked? What what didn't? Definitely get a car. <laughs> <laughs> and figure out where you get watch free in advance. Clear that today. So in terms of talking about pros and cons, what worked for you? Uh, what didn't? So uh, I already mentioned that uh, we hired too many people before we flew off. So if you hired freshers or people who are new to your company and leave them to do things and remotely manage, that probably won't work. So please don't do that. Uh, second, uh, you know that mentors over there won't be able to help you with certain things. And this thing I think we did pretty well that we didn't listen to them when they gave us, gave us business advice uh, with respect to the Indian market because they started with contract firms being sold in US and in Korea and they were out of the right. But what we took from them is work advice how competition came into the US market for product comparison sites and uh, how why they haven't entered India yet and what we can do unique in India so these are few things that uh, we uh, talked to the mentors over there about and we only uh, engaged extensively with mentors who would stay with us even after the incubation so that's a good thing that mentors over there if they like you uh, out of the 25 of 30 that I interacted with uh, at least 10 of them uh, were ready to stay in touch with us and get updates from us help us on an ongoing basis so it's our building relationship with the help uh, beyond the accelerator uh, again you do get a car that's really <laughs> uh, so i'm saying that uh, so much because uh, traveling two and a half hours one way for a meeting and coming back two and a half hours you will not spend the entire day with just one meeting and you realize if you have a car you will take much more meetings and 
you, you need to spend more time uh, uh, doing what you are there for. And uh, trying to save $2,000, $4,000 on not renting a car probably was a mistake, and I really regret that one. Uh, also, specific for finance startups, you will be in Mountain View, and a lot of your contacts will be in San Francisco. So, tra traveling uh, would take some amount of, uh, some amount of your time. Um, apart from that, uh, Ramshi? <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's, that's all I have on that. Sure. Abhinav, anything that you would like to do different in hindsight? One thing which I would say uh, is generally these days the startups which are formed are both started by the technology people. And when you are there for an accelerator, one of them has to take a different role as a marketing or as a salesperson. So one advice will be get out of the room. Go out, meet as many people, conduct as many interviews as possible to make sure whatever you have developed is actually of some use. Second thing is make sure that within the community or within the other startups, start talking to them, see what they are struggling with, help them out, talk to them because most likely they will be your first customers. The startups will always, the startups in your batch, in the previous batches, will be your first customers. That's what I would suggest to everyone. Okay. Are there any uh, additional points? Uh, uh, one of the advices which we got uh, while we are graduating from OIC is uh, keep in touch with them. Like uh, the, the mail actually had this text, like you know, most of the successful Y, y Combinator companies keep in touch with us, get, get, you know, mail us the stats or updates or how your team is doing even after the three month period. So it's not like 90 days is your you know, incubation period or you know, the program, and 91st day you're like out of YC or you're out of 500 startups, nothing like that. You need to keep in touch with them. That, that helps them to guide you even after the program. So that, that's something we have been trying to do actively, like you know, make sure every month we just send them our stats, send them our updates, how, how things are moving, and where we are failing and the issues we are facing. And that, that has helped us tremendously. So that's, that's one thing probably I've got to add. Okay. Um, and you were, were part of Morpheus uh, yeah. before you were selected for Y Combinator. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts you would want to share in terms of your India experience and your US experience? Uh, the, the way we uh, approach that is when, whenever we are dealing with Indian market, uh, a customer here in, in, in India, we usually take the advice from Morpheus. We get in touch with them. Uh, regarding, hey, this is the scenario here, how do we go about this? And if, if it's going to be a US market or, or in general a global market, then we go to you know, PG or the YC uh, community. So um, mainly because uh, they don't understand our market and you know, people here might not understand the US market very well. So it, it's better to go to the right people who have been there and done that. So that's how we have been uh, you know, taking care of things between the Indian accelerator and the US accelerator. That has worked well for us. Okay. Um, any thoughts from um, the rest of you in terms of you know, the post-accelerate engagement? Like how has uh, the program helped you, um, you know, going forward? Uh, it, was it just about those three months? You know, is, is that three months the right amount of time? Or you know, where do you see your relationship with your partner going forward? Uh, maybe Vamshi or Uncle, either of you can take a 500. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, a big thing to remember is with most accelerators, uh, things don't end after demo day. Uh, what, you've, what you've really gotten out of an accelerator is a network of people that you've met, uh, people who know who you are. Uh, and you should keep in touch, uh, as Hari says, uh, even after the three month or six month acceleration period. You should always keep them in touch, not just with updates and questions, but just generally letting them know. Uh, be socially active. Uh, that that engagement is really important. It also helps if you meet up or speak to other founders, founders before you, uh, who went through the same acceleration program, or founders who went after you. So it's it's more of a more of a ecosystem and a network that you can tap into anytime you want. If you should, if you want to get the most out of uh, a YC or a finance startup. Uh, yeah. I remember someone posting this question to Dave McClure once. Uh, as to what will you do for me if, you, if I join 500 startups? And the question that came back to that person was, what will you do for us? And the point being made is that you're joining a community, and it's not about just taking, it's also about giving there and engaging. 
So there is a common platform on, on which all thousand founders of uh, 500 startups interact with each other, and it's a constant engagement. Uh, so to say, a lot of things that you absorb, a lot of relationships that you've built at uh, an incubator abroad or any incubator in India as well, you get the alumni network. It's, it's as effective as uh, any B school or probably more effective because they are entrepreneurs. And uh, specifically for us, we now know 10 companies in India who are part of 500 network and we can approach them. Like Deobhat is an amazing techie, so I know that my co-founder speaks to him and takes advice on that. Vamshi is a analytical strategic guy, not as loud when it comes to marketing, but he gives us good, solid advice on this should be your direction as a company. Don't get lost in the noise. That's what he said to me back in the valley. And uh, that way, uh, those relationships which you carry forward and the network which you have. Today, if I have a uh, problem with Google or Facebook, I know that I'm one connection away from someone there. And that really helps. Or if I need a, a solution which I need to integrate with my uh, portal, probably there is a 500 company which I could use. So that way the network is opened up to you and you give, keep giving back to the network and keep taking from it on an ongoing basis. And at least for 500, there's a common dashboard on which all of you are on. In closing, 